Alright everyone Maharib is here, and I have already completed the story for Wuthering Waves and spent my fair share of time playing this game since launch. And I was planning to create a video on why Wuwa is the best game in the world and Genshin is not even close. But oh boy was I proven to be wrong in so many ways that I cannot even count. But it doesn't mean Wuthering Waves is a bad game or anything. But let me tell you about my experience and what game do I think comes out on top especially if you are new and want to know which game should you start playing between the two. So to be fairly honest, this is a honeymoon phase of Wuthering Waves as of 2024. So wherever you will search in the internet, you will mostly hear phrases like Genshin could never, and Wuthering Waves is better than Genshin in this way or that way yada yada yada. But as I see this, both of these games have similarities and differences. Whether you like one difference or the other is up to you. The problem with YouTube and content creation is that if I will say I like Genshin Impact's combat system more than Wuthering Waves, I will be called a Genshin stan or a skill issue guy or things like that. Although it doesn't bother me, but just saying that it happens, and due to this reason, a very few people actually got the guts to let you know what they truly feel about the game and what the reality is. Just a side note that I will not be taking lags and performance issues and optimization changes into account because I am sure as the time passes, Kuro Games will address these problems to make the gameplay smoother and maybe some low-end devices will also be able to start running this game optimally. But right now, even while consuming 80 gigabytes of the storage, my Genshin Impact runs more smoothly than Wuthering Waves and this game takes a lot of time to load and start. And even after starting the game, it takes some time to render the movements and textures and whatnot. I think it will be addressed in the future. But I'll be talking about the games themselves and their similarities and differences and giving you my personal subjective opinion on what things I think Wuthering Waves did it better and in what aspects do Genshin still holds the crown. First point I would like to talk about is game systems and user interface. If you already play Genshin and switch to Wuthering Waves, almost 90% of the things are entirely the same. So if someone say it's a Genshin copy or a Genshin 2.0, he will not be entirely wrong. And I don't know why even to this date most of the content creators say Genshin is also a copy of Breath of the Wild. When Breath of the Wild is not a gacha game, it does not have element system, and if anything, only Mondstadt and Liyue looks a little similar to Breath of the Wild. But in this day and age, Genshin has its own identity, and saying Genshin is a Breath of the Wild clone is like saying Tower of Fantasy is a Genshin clone. When you know Tower of Fantasy is an MMORPG, and they're not even competing against each other. But Wuthering Waves is a game created directly for Genshin players to switch to this game. And that's why most of the systems in this game are entirely identical. Adventure Handbook, Wishing Banners, Achievements, Daily Commissions, Battle Pass, and all that. If you play Genshin and start playing Wuthering Waves, you just feel like I am playing a newly released Genshin Impact. And man this user interface and font is just ridiculous. I don't know what were they thinking when they were designing this interface. This game looks like it was created in 2010 or something. For some reference, look at as a Permilia interface, Zenless Zone Zero interface. These new games are actually putting the effort and creativity. And even Genshin's interface is way better, and keep it in mind that this game was released three years ago. Okay, enough of the interface rant. When it comes to reward and banner system, it's better than Genshin in every way. They have separate standard character and weapon banner, pity is low, you have three standard banners at the start, one gives you 5 star and only 40 pulls. One lets you select your own standard banner character and one is usual. Weapon banner is guaranteed and all that good stuff. So when it comes to the initial rewards, Wuthering Waves did a good job, not gonna lie. Secondly, let's talk about overworld exploration and combat system of the game before going to the story aspect and the end game. When it comes to character movements and exploration, I quickly became a fan of Wuthering Waves. The parkour, infinite stamina, running on mountains, double jump, electric grapple hook. It all makes transportation so much fun. And do I have to mention the Inferno Rider? Man, this is awesome. And where Genshin's open world exploration is not as rewarded, Wuthering Wave's entire ecosystem, meaning artifact system revolves around defeating open world enemies. Something I really liked. In Genshin, open world enemies only gives you character materials, and sometimes you overcap on them or whatnot. It is not a huge incentive to get as opposed to something like Echoes which is an endless open world grind. So if you like to roam around in the open world, I'd say try Wuthering Waves at least once. But if we talk about the downside, it's just that getting artifacts from the domains is a lot easier. It frustrates me when I go, find, and defeat a mob and it does not give me any Echo. And it is time consuming as well. Or maybe because my Danjin is not fully built, so it takes a lot of time for me to fight these open world mobs or bosses. But hey! It will take me some time to build her. Also, look how cute she is. And if we are talking about my skill issue in Wuthering Waves, let's talk about the combat system. Now hear me out guys, 
and try not to get triggered, but I can't say Wuthering Waves combat is better than Genshin, or Genshin's combat is better than Wuthering Waves, because they're entirely different. Genshin's combat entirely depends on elements, and mixing and matching those elements as best as we can to achieve amazing results. Wuwa's combat is highly skilled based with dodge and counter mechanics as its core part. Also, keep this between us okay? I still don't know how parry works. In my opinion, players nowadays are loving Wuthering Waves combat because it's different and new to them. Otherwise, I still enjoy Genshin's combat a lot. Wuthering Waves also have some enemies that are immune to certain elements, or bosses having resistance to different elements, but since these elements don't hold a significant impact in this game like Genshin, it has its own advantages as well as disadvantages. Like you will be able to get yourself one sustain, one sub DPS or buffer, and one on field hypercarry without caring much about the elements since there is no reaction, but at the same time, it will mean that the role will be more important than the element. So if one DPS, for example Jian, is better than the other one, e.g. Calchero, then Jian will be better than him in every variation and every team, there will be exceptions in the future, but mostly it will be like that. Whereas in Genshin, even if one DPS, for example Al Haytham, is better than the other one, like Tartaglia, if your team is not centered around those elements, like Hyper Bloom or Quick Bloom, and you have national team members built up already, you will still find Tartaglia more valuable in your account than Al Haytham. I know it's not the best example, but I am just trying to say that there is high level of power creep possibilities in Wuthering Waves as I am seeing things here. Just like Honkai Star Rail. But if you ask me, I like both of the combat mechanics equally. It's just that I don't like extremely lengthy fights. So I will still hold on for that unless I don't get some high investment characters in Wuthering Waves or see some speed runs on the internet. I am a relaxed guy, so Genshin's easy combat is still very satisfying for me. With combat out of the way, next up, we have story and voiceover. Oh boy, do I really have to comment on that? I don't know about you guys, but I am not a story guy who thinks deep into lore and all that good stuff. And I confess that I never read any unvoiced side quest, but at the same time, I never skipped voiced Archon quests in any game. But guys, after listening to Yang Yang's English voice, I am starting to appreciate Paimon. I still don't know what these sentinels do, so I just use them as statue of the seven meaning healing. Other than that, let me spoil the story for you guys. There were some cute girls who were willing to seduce main character in every way possible. Next, there were some black lambs and white sheeps and some riddles in a village. Not sure what they were trying to say, but man that was a horrible time for me. Next, there are a group of stalkers known as Black Shores, and main character is the most important being in their lives for some unknown reason. But goddamn this girl is hella gorgeous. Next we did something with a machine and it caused chaos, and we teamed up with Jiyin and saved the day. Also, Hillichurls are known as Tayset Discords, join my Tayset Discord by the way, and Treasure Hoarders are known as Exiles. That's all I know about the story. And not from the story itself, just what I was able to decipher from what I was seeing after skipping every time I felt like Yang Yang is about to talk. Wuthering Waves music is also not as good. Not even polished and high quality as Genshin's music is. I only like the intro music and the one I am using as my video background. I also uploaded it on my music playlist because I liked it. But other than that, nothing was so moody, or I felt like the music is hitting it. There were some fight musics I liked, like the one in our first fight with Crownless. But majorly the music was not top notch. Also, since there is no standard overworld battle music, sometimes mobs attack me, and I think I am not even in a fight. It doesn't feel right. Anyways, these things can also be addressed in the future, but for now, voice acting and story is just terrible in Wuthering Waves. Even worse than Mondstadt or Liyue Archon Quests if we compare it to Genshin's early game story. But that's just my personal opinion, so if you want to get triggered, be my guest. But in my experience, if you're planning to play Wuthering Waves, skip the story and enjoy the gameplay. Thanks. Speaking of gameplay, let's talk about endgame. Although I am not strong enough to fight any of these, but as far as I can see, one is simulated universe, but echoes are the main focus there. One is our classic Spiral Abyss, and one is Spiral Abyss Ultra Pro Max. My opinion, this game mode should not have time limit. Otherwise there is no point to making billion HP boss fight and make it a DPS check instead of skill check. Anyways, I don't like lengthy fights, and I prefer human enemies instead of these weird looking monsters. That's why Eremites, Exiles, and Nobushi are better enemies than these weird creatures according to me. Fighting Tartaglia, or Raiden, or Arlecchino, and even Scar, actually feels like we are fighting someone of an equal caliber. These beings looks like someone just put me into a zoo, and now asking me to fight monkeys and bears that I don't care about fighting. But that's just my personal preference. I don't like a lot of end games in a game, 
and the only reason I am a little bit hyped for Imaginarium Theater is that I will get to play with the characters I don't usually own. And the fact that it switches with Spiral Abyss means that I will have to worry less about Spiral Abyss now. But that's the discussion for another video. But since most of the community wanted a hardcore version of Genshin Impact, and by the community, I mean content creators. Because if you want to have my hot take on this topic, since most of the players play the game to have fun, enjoy, and relax, after a hard day at work, adding a lot of endgame and very overpowered bosses and lengthy fights feels even more exhausting for them. But because content creators have a job of playing games all day, building characters and whatnot, it works in their favor. While on the other hand, more relaxing and easy fights and just one in game of 30 minutes max, once every two weeks, just to test your progress is more casual friendly, even if the person is not a hardcore gamer. That's why it is beneficial for a casual player who likes to enjoy the game at his own pace, but is really bad for content creators because they do everything so quickly and complain that there is nothing to do in the game. So I can safely say, if you are too into of gaming, and likes to have long engaging battles and exercise your skills, Wuthering Waves is better. It has so much to grind, it has so much to do. But if you are a casual player looking for fun and lighthearted game that will relax you after a hard day at work, Genshin Impact is really really good for you. Don't listen to all the drama happening these days. Genshin is still a great game, and it will stay like that for a very long time. I will create a video on should you play Genshin in 2024. So make sure to subscribe. And to be honest, comparing any game to Genshin Impact is basically overhyping the game which will always lead to disappointment. Both games have their pros and cons. Some are intentional, some are unintentional, which we all hope will be fixed in the future. But if you enjoy a game, nothing else matters. Hi, I am Muharib's wife, Layla. My husband would be very happy if you leave a like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to join our Discord server and he will see you in the comment section. Peace!